Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on relational algebra outer join operation. We are now in the last type of the relational algebra operations. We are dealing with the additional operations and the last relational algebra operation that we are focusing today is the outer join. In the last presentation, we have focused on inner join. Let's quickly revisit inner join. Obviously, join means joining or combining two or more relations or tables. How this inner join is performed is that the matching tuples or as per the join condition, the matching rows are joined. So, only those tuples that satisfy the matching criteria are included in the output relation and the non-matching rows are discarded. That is what we have seen as the rest are excluded. I mean to say in simple terms, only matching rows will appear in the output and non-matching rows will not appear in the output of the inner join. And we have seen about three variations of inner join, the theta join, the equijoin and the natural join. If you need more clarity, I request you to watch my previous lecture, the natural join operations where we have elaborately seen about all three types of joins, the theta join, the equijoin and the natural join. In this presentation, let's focus on outer join. In inner join, only matching rows are included, isn't it? But in the outer join, the result, I mean the output table, includes unmatched rows of one of the tables or of both tables. So, in outer join, not just matching rows will appear, even unmatching rows will appear in the output. Let's say we are joining two tables, obviously the matching rows will be there in the output. Along with that, we will be having unmatching rows depending on what type of join we are performing. Anyway, when we see an example, it will be more clear for you. For now, just understand outer join, it also includes unmatched rows. And obviously, the matching is also based on the join condition. And that is why we have this point here. The matching is based on the join condition. Whatever join we are dealing with, everything will have a join condition. If there is no join condition and everything has to be combined, then it's simply the relational algebra fundamental operation, which is the Cartesian product. Now let's see the types of outer join. There are basically three types of outer join. The left outer join, the right outer join and full outer join. Just see how the symbol is represented. Left outer join will have some additional marks in the left hand side. Right outer join will have some additional marks in the right hand side. And full outer join will have some mark in both the sides. With this basic knowledge, let's understand all three types of join with a single example. In this, I am going to explain about all the three types of outer join. The left outer join, the right outer join and the full outer join. For performing the outer join, I am bringing two relations. This is the first relation, parts relation. And here is the second relation, which is the products relation. In the parts relation, we have two columns or two attributes. Name of the part, simply mentioned as part and the product number. In the products relation, we have product number as well as price. Obviously, when we want to perform join, we should have at least one common attribute, isn't it? So, can you see here, this product number is actually the common attribute that exists in both the relations. Let's start with the first outer join technique, which is the left outer join. Parts, left outer join, products. Here is the parts relation. Here is the products relation. Now, if you observe wire, magnets, blades, plastic, oil, there are five items in the parts relation and there are four items in the products relation. The product number 505, which is having a unit price or simply price of 3.70. For 10, this is the value. For 205 and 30, we have other values respectively. Now, what type of join we are dealing with? It's the left outer join, isn't it? So, the matching rows in both the relations will be appearing in the relation. Also, the non-matching rows from the left-hand side table or the relation which is in the left side, that will be appearing in the output. So, left outer join will have matching rows and non-matching rows or unmatching rows in the left relation. Let's see that now. Wire, 10 is here. Do we have 10 here? Yes, 10 is having 45.75. Can you see here wire, 10, 45.75. So, matching rows is appearing in the output relation. Coming to magnets 10, yes, 10 is also there. 
So this will also be appearing in the output relation. Coming to the third row, yes, Blades has 205 as the product number. Yes, we do have 205 in the products relation and hence this is also a matching row and that is why we are seeing Blades 205 18.90. Coming to the next row, which is plastic 30. Do we have 30 here? Yes, we do have 30 here. So plastic 30, 7.55 will be appearing in the output relation. Coming to oil, oil is 160. And do we have 160 here? No. If it is inner join, oil will not be appearing in the output relation, isn't it? But here, oil will be appearing in the output relation. And 160 will also be appear in the output relation because what join I am performing? left outer join just see the symbol so the left hand side table has more weightage not just the matching rows will appear even non-patching or unmatching rows in the left hand side relation will also appear but there is no entry for 160 here isn't it so what will be there for this column because this column is actually from this relation isn't it these two columns are already there in this relation so this value will be appearing just like that what about this column price so for this, it uses null value because this value is actually not applicable and hence we want a special value, isn't it? And that is why we have a special value that is used here, which is the null value. I hope now you can understand why we dealt null values before coming into join. Because this null is not only useful in scenarios for dealing with mandatory fields, but also in these kind of circumstances. I hope left outer join is clear to you. Let's focus on the right outer join. Here is the right outer join. What we are going to do here is the parts right outer join products. Now which table or which relation has more priority or more weightage here? The right side relation. I mean to say the matching rows in both the relation will be obviously appearing and also the non-matching or unmatching rows in the right hand side relation will also appear. Let's see that now. Wire 10, 10 is there. Yes, this will be appearing. Can you see here? Wire 10, 45.75, which is this is the value, right, for this row. And coming to this, magnets 10. Yes, we do have 10, 45.75. So this will also be there in the output. So can you see here, magnets 10, 45.75 is also appearing. Coming to the third one, blades 205. Yes, we do have 205 here. And that is why we get blades 205 18.90, which is this. Coming to the fourth row, plastic 30. Yes, we do have an entry for 30 here. And that is why we are getting plastic 37.55. Coming to the last one, oil 160. We do not have an entry for 160 in this relation. So, oil 160 will not appear. However, what is missing in the right hand side? We already have entries for 10, 205 and 30. Can you see here? 10, 205 and 30. What is missing in the right hand side relation? 505. So 505 will be appearing in the output relation with this value 3.70 and what about the path? That's not there, right? So what will be the value that is filled by the database? It's the null value. It's missing or unknown or not applicable, right? I hope right outer join is clear to you now. Let's focus on full outer join now, which is this. Parts, full outer join, products. What does full outer join mean? Matching rows from both the relation will appear. In addition to this, non-matching rows from both the relations will be appearing. That's the speciality of full outer join. Let's see that now. Wire 10, 10, 45.75. Yes, this is appearing. Magnets 10, 10, 45.75. Yes, this is also appearing in the output relation. Blades 205. And 205, 18.90 will also appear here. Plastic 30, 37.55 will also appear here. Oil 160, oil 160 will appear. There is no 160 here. So it will be a null value. So we have entered all the values in the left hand side relation in this table. However, we still have the right hand side table because we are dealing with the full outer join. So the entries related to 10, 205, 30 and 160 are already entered. Can you see here? 10, 205, 30 and 160 are already entered. So all the left hand side values are appearing in the output relation. Is anything missing on the right hand side? Do we have 10 here? Yes. Do we have 205? Yes. Do we have 30? Yes. This 160 is from this relation. Is anything missing on this right hand side table? Yes, 505. 
yes, phi naught phi will be appearing in the output relation. Wherever the value is missing or not applicable, it is null. So this is full outer join. In simple terms, full outer join will have all the rows once from both the relations. I mean the left outer join output as well as from the right outer join output. I hope now outer join is clear to you. And that's it guys. What we have learned in this presentation? The three types of outer join, the left outer join, right outer join and full outer join. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.